<sighs> Y'all know this is about. Every single person in the world knows what this about. I could leave it titleless, descriptionless, iconless, imageless, everything. Everybody would know what this fucking video is about. Now, here's the thing. I actually had to sit here. I already actually recorded one. Uh, and I, I rambled a lot. I mean, I didn't necessarily ramble. Like, I knew what I was talking about, but I'm going in circles. I'm going in circles from video to video saying the same exact shit. And the thing is, the people already know. Everybody already knows. Like, I'm not trying to say, like, yo, you need to pick a side, motherfuckers, and get either get on my side or get the fuck out. You know, like, I, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I'm just kind of discussing it seeing where other people's opinions lie and whatnot and just trying to kind of feel out you know like does anybody have a viewpoint that i haven't considered that may make me uh reconsider my own reevaluate my own position what i think about our system works how they do their business and whatnot and it's just um so you know, kind of just trying to open up a dialogue necess kind of but it's so at this point it's so unnecessary because here's the thing Arc System Works isn't doing anything new. That's the problem, right? Is that they keep doing the same shit over and over and over. They're not doing anything new. They're not fixing their mistakes. They're not capitalizing on their, uh, on what good happens. They're just continually doing the same thing. And now here's the here's what I get out of it. Here's what out of this whole thing. Like, not I'm gonna discuss the game. Uh, well, not really the game, because there's not a lot to go on for the game. There will be a low test. Uh, wow, right in the middle of EVO, that just occurred to me. They're doing a low test right in the middle of EVO, when how many Japanese players that, you know, that play Persona or Guilty Gear, of which there are a pretty decent amount, are not gonna be in Japan. Holy shit, Arc System work sucks! I did not, that only, that just hit me right now that they're doing a low test for their new game right in the middle of fucking evo if there is anything anything in the world that shows they could not give a fuck about anything outside of japan it's that they have two games on the main stage of evo actually you know what it doesn't even matter persona 4 arena is getting run all the way through on friday guilty gear top 8 isn't until Sunday morning, I believe. So, you know, I guess it really doesn't... It's kind of irrelevant in, in regard to that, but it's still... It's just overall... Planning an event in the middle of EVO of all times. Uh, that's... Wow. Like, I'm actually... My mind is blown. I don't really have anything to say about that besides just... The inconsideration, the lack of regard for anything outside of their little bubble is astonishing. And th that's the thing, it's not even really just their little bubble because it does impact them. There's going to be a decent chunk of their potential players that could be there giving input that are very high level players, who, which is the kind of input you want to fucking begin with. They're not going to be there. They're going to be at EVO. They're going to be in Vegas. Shit. <laughs> well, I, that's, yeah, cool, good. Awesome. Uh, that, that I mean, that's all I can say about that. I could pop off for a while about it, but where's the fucking use in that? They don't give a shit, right? I'm not about to convince Arc System Works of anything because they certainly don't care about any voices. Not even necessarily because obviously I don't have a huge... Well, I got a huge goddamn voice, but my voice doesn't reach like a significant amount of people, to be perfectly honest. You know, we're all aware of that. I wish it did, but it doesn't. Maybe someday. We'll see. But for the moment you know it's still but even then even if let's say i had the install base of like a million subscribers they still wouldn't care for the sole fact of the language that i am speaking and the territory i reside in they would not take that into account they could not care less about what i think about them as a company about their game it has been proven time and time again that outside of japan opinions are moot in regard to their game which is fantastic I mean, just hey you know you want to alienate an entire the install base a honestly i mean you know it, it just shows to me everything that they're doing 
just proves to me that they only care about arcades. They don't... Because here's the thing. It's kind of comparative to this whole, you know, thing that exploded with the uh, release of the PS4 and the Xbox One. That in the entire world of HD remasters or uh, definitive editions, this is exactly what they've been doing since they started making fighting games. That's what they're basically doing. Because the whole point of these HD remasters and definitive editions is that you're taking a game which already exists, all the groundwork is laid for it, you already have the game made, you just need to pretty it up a bit. That's all you gotta do. You just gotta, you know, put some makeup on it and shove it out the door. You don't gotta bang some female, impregnate her, wait nine to ten months for the impregnation to complete for the baby to come out, then you gotta raise that baby, teach it morals, and make it a, you know, good person, and wait for that to flourish, that blossom to open, and be the pretty little flower it is. All you gotta do is just pull somebody off the street and be like, you know what? You ugly, you old, you out of date, let me throw, do you do a makeover for you, pretty you up, throw you in the shower, makeup, boom, shove you out the door, you're a brand new person. That's what they're doing, right? That's the comparison, and so it costs very little, and in, in Comparison to creating a new game from the ground up, conceptualizing it, getting a story, getting gameplay, making you know a gameplay mechanic that stands out, that makes your game look good, marketing the game, all that's already done. You don't have to do any of that. All you have to say is, hey, you remember this game that you guys loved? Here's a new version of it for your brand new shiny console. It costs them damn near nothing, and it's the same exact thing. Arc System Works is doing this. They have this game. It's already created. Everything's already done. All they have to do is make it Xbox or PlayStation or whatever compatible and throw it out the door. It's already done. It's already finished. They made it. So the fact that... So all they want to do is milk the arcade money for as long as they can. The arcade money starts to falter a bit. All right, cool. Let's throw a console version out the door and announce a new arcade update to get the arcade people hyped up again. Who gives a shit about the console users, right? That's all this says to me. This game, let's ignore the fact that it hasn't even been two weeks since the release outside of Asia. It hasn't even been two months since the console release that a lot of people imported, but a lot of people didn't. And now you have a game which, let's be honest, was very alienating of the player base. A lot of people, including myself, just didn't feel it. You know, some people were very negative about it. Some people tried to counter that negativity. Some people, like me, you know, I'm outspoken regarding Arc System Works, I think, but I'm not really that big. Like, I haven't really gone that far about Extend. To me, Extend is just a boring game. There's nothing exciting about it. There's nothing there to draw me in, but I also don't think there's anything particularly negative about it. So, I, it's just Arc System Works' is business. That side of things is what's irking me. The game itself is really just not on my radar, to be perfectly honest. Like, it's not really worth... It's not good enough to praise. It's not bad enough to bitch about. It's just there. Um, And that's how a lot of people feel, was just a collective, eh. We can wait. We can wait for the next one. This one isn't really... You know, it's just kind of boring overall, and that's exactly what the last Extend was. That's probably what the next Extend will be, because for some reason, they like to do cyclical things. I don't know why, They just, but they just keep doing the same exact process over and over and over and it's astonishing to me that they're continuing to do this because I don't think they're really drawing in a significant amount of new people but they're alienating people like with each version they release another person kind of looks at it and is like you know what fuck it just fuck everything I'm done I'm out and I don't think they're pulling in enough people to make up for that but still I mean aside from all of that it's just mm. It just, it just blows my mind that it hasn't even been two months since Extend dropped on consoles and they're all like they didn't even wait until after Evo. And you know, who knows? Maybe they're doing this now because after Evo, they're going to finally announce Persona 4 Arena 2.0, which would just be fantastic if they finally announce that. Like, after again, the same exact thing that happened last year. Here's the you know, if, if the hype happens, if the hype occurs for Persona 4 Arena at Evo and it draws people's attention. And a lot of people kind of start to think, maybe I should get into this game. Maybe it's worthwhile. Oh, wait, there's already a new version. I'll just wait for that instead. Fuck, it's just, everything is so bad. But now they start, now, you know, they're releasing Battle Fantasia now. That's another fighting game 
to compete with the rest of them. Except, let's be honest, Battle Fantasia isn't going to compete with anything. It's not that good of a game. But it's still just this constant barrage, this endless barrage of fighting games that nobody can keep up with. People are going to be skipping it constantly. It's like, you know, okay, a new version of Guilty Gear is out. Well, I'm basically playing the new version of Persona, or I'm basically playing, waiting for the new version of Blaze Blue. I don't really care about Guilty Gear, so I'll just skip Guilty Gear. And it's just, from a business side of things, it, I really don't see how this works for them. But granted, I don't know how much money they make off of the arcade scene. Like, it could be that the arcade scene is basically allowing them to do whatever the fuck they want. I don't know. I don't know how much money that makes them. But I feel like if they were just a normal game company, and the only thing they had to rely on were the sales of their game, the physical sales of their game, they would not have made it past, like, Continuum Shift 2. I, I don't know. But again, I mean, I'm just... I don't want to go too far into the business side of things. We all know how I feel about Arc System Works as a business right now, about what they're doing. And let's be, you know, by now, again, people know how they feel. All the evidence is there to make up your mind about how you feel about how they price their games, how they price their DLC, how they release their games. If you're okay with it, you're okay with it, and nothing's really going to change your mind. Like, there's, it's just a simple fact. And if you don't like it by now, you don't like it. And, you know, there's probably not going to be doing anything to make you like them all over again. So it's kind of pointless to discuss the business side of things. because I mean, like I said, everybody's just kind of made up their mind. This is what they've been doing for the past five years. And so it's clearly not going to change. They clearly couldn't care less about like the public perception of them. And that kind of blows my mind because I actually it's uh, I read an article somewhat recently. Uh, it was from an indie game developer that basically discussed kind of what it's like to be in games today and how like it used to be enough for you to make just a good game for you to make a very good game and that it would stand out by itself it would speak for itself it would sell itself basically but now the market is so flooded with so many different options that now just making a good game isn't nearly enough now the marketing is a significant portion of getting your game out there and I don't think anybody can argue that Arc System Works fails completely and utterly in marketing and supporting their game. And not even just that, but also supporting their player base, their fan base. Like, they clearly could not care less about your opinions. And that's what kills me, is that these people, we are giving them our money, right? Like, they're creating a game for us to play and enjoy. So there's a kind of, you know, appreciation of that. But there's a mu there's got to be a mutual appreciation. Well, I guess there really doesn't have to cuz look at EA, they constantly shit on everybody that buys their games. They couldn't care less about the people that buys their games. Ubisoft same thing with their I mean, they just a lot of people really just don't care if people keep buying the games over and over and proving that it really doesn't matter if you are a like terribly shitty have a terribly shitty public perception if you just continue releasing like games within specific uh with specific titles i suppose so i guess that's really it ultimately doesn't well it matters a hell of a lot more for a small company than it does for a big company but still either way i digress i am going off on a bit of a tangent here but it's just without that marketing without that support nobody outside of the entire of the current you know arc system works fan base is going to look in and poke their head in and be like hey what's going on guys what you guys doing there there's no nowhere for people to look in and do that like there's no attention on these games nobody arc system works is not supporting these games beyond just releasing them they're not marketing them they're not trying to you know hold uh i don't i don't know it's ugh. Ugh. i keep saying i need to stop discussing the business side of things and i keep going back to the business side of things because there's so much to uh kind of just be able to rag on them for and honestly i guess i shouldn't be taking the easy pot shots because honestly arc system works business decisions are easy pot shots it's easy to criticize them because there's nothing there's nothing to really praise about their business decisions about what they're doing so i will walk away from arc system works let us talk only of shit central fiction is that what it's called is that what the subtitle is central fiction let me go check that out real quick. Oops, not refresh, not refresh. No! 
Um, yes, yeah, Central Fiction. So, number one, two new characters confirmed. Nine is uh, hinted at, and a lot of people are basically saying, yes, Nine is playable. Absolutely. Uh, but the two new characters, as far as I'm aware, after my whole little Twitter thing, uh, regarding, you know, seeing the initial reaction to seeing uh, that there's a new version of Blaze Blue, I looked into the characters a bit more, because I assumed they were both from story mode, but then Monsieur Koopa Claus went ahead and told me that uh, the Naoto character was not from the story mode. Apparently, the Naoto character is from some series of com Blaze Blue comics, which I'm sure everybody is aware of. I didn't even know there were Blaze Blue comics. Uh, and then Habiki is from story mode. I guess he's Kagura's... Maybe she. Uh, it is Kagura's assistant uh, in the game, but it's still, it's just kind of, it's still just... And a lot of people are basically saying right now, because 9 seems playable, and because there's still no word of Jubei, it's basically, like, confirmed is gonna be a DLC character. In my, I mean, honestly, that sounds like something Arc System Works would do, and the pessimistic side of me is like, yes, they will try to money gouge people for this character, for the character that everybody wants after, like, building up continual anticipation over and over again, people hoping for the character, and then finally, like, he'll be the very last character released and he'll be a DLC character, and there will be no updated edition to introduce him and have, you know, the full cast without any DLC involved. Like, he'll, it'll be that. They'll release the game. No more updates. This is it. Story mode is over. This is the final Blaze Blue. Here's Jubei as a DLC character. You'll never be able to get him anywhere else. Like, the pessimistic side of me believes 100% absolutely Arc System Works would do that. The still other pessimistic side of me is basically saying that Arc System Works will never put Jubei in the game. They will continue to make excuses for why he can't be, whether it's his height or, you know, whatever other excuses they may make. I don't think... Per, that's where I'm leaning. Personally, I just don't think they're ever going to put him in the game. I don't think they care. However, like I said, the money gouging thing is certainly something that they would do. On, and that's kind of, like, I guess that right there kind of sums up what I think about them as a company is that I can use the phrase money gouging in regard to them and completely mean it and believe that they would do it. And that is very unfortunate, but that's how it is. Um, but anyway, so I really, if you look at the video, I'm actually going to watch it again right now. Uh, I'm going to mute it so that, you know, there's no sound, but I'm just kind of, I'm just paying attention to it right now. One thing I noticed while I was watching it, like, is anybody let me pause it real quick oh hey i actually did not see that one before i paused it on um let me actually go ahead and like just um take a screenshot real quick how do i oh wow that is just that is not good quality never mind let me not take a screenshot of that because that is absolutely atrocious quality um it's at 33 seconds of the trailer uh asriel is doing this like airborne superman punch basically right towards amane's dick it's right on target for Amane's genitals. That's a shame. That's going to hurt quite a bit. I hadn't seen that before because it's kind of in that in the middle of like that rapid uh, fire kind of uh, just whatever. But for those of you that may have not watched this yet, let me actually move it to YouTube so then I get at least a little bit of a bigger thing going on here. For the actual like display, right, for all of the icons and everything... Is it just me, or does everything look incredibly downgraded, quality-wise? Like, it looks like this is a game that would go towards, like, the 3DS or the Vita or, like, an iPad game. That's what all of the text stuff and all of the icons and the health bars and the barrier bar and the burst icons and the meter bar, that's what it looks like to me. It looks very basic, very, um... I mentioned this, that it, you know, back to Calamity Trigger font... Uh, for like the combo counter and whatnot, but it never, I, it d wasn't until I looked closer, and I'll mention why I started to look closer after uh, I discussed this bit, but it's just, it looks so unpolished and ugly, and especially in comparison to how it used to be, it just does not look good in any way, shape, or form, um, I don't know, man, it just, it does not, it does not look good especially now that I'm pausing it like when it's not in motion it looks even worse but so the thing that I wanted to mention is um oh hey they actually have a timer now for how long the timer looks ugly as hell but they have a timer for how long overdrive is lasting but anyway so 
go back and look at the trailer and just watch for how much shit is red. Like, attack animations, you know, like the sword slashes or the gunshots, you know, punches, whatever. So much of it is red. The combo counter is red. The uh, burst icon is red. Health bars, when they get all the way down, are red. And I don't, I can't remember specifically the colors that it used to be. It might have gotten, I think it was just it was orange once it got really low right it used to be like it would start green yellow orange when it was especially low now it's red uh draining life is red the x over the burst icon is red let me just rachel's attacks right now are causing red x's ragn has always been red so that's not really anything special but yeah it's just there's so much red that's, that's the thing that made me look closer, is it's like, why is there so, like, why is there just red slashes everywhere? This honestly really does, like, it looks like this is going to belong on a mobile platform. <laughs> like, I don't know if maybe it's just, you know, the quality of the video? Or what it is? I don't know. I honestly don't know, but it just, it looks like it's a downgrade in quality to me. And, and again, that's not really necessarily a commentary on the game, because obviously the game's not going to be coming out tomorrow. It's not finished. They could be working on a lot of extra polish that they need to do. Who knows? But yeah, like right now, it really just does not look... It doesn't look as good to me, to my eyes, for some reason. I don't know what it is. But anyway, so, uh, I mean, obviously they're showing off some new attacks, um... It amuses me that, like, every with everybody, they're showing off these, like, flashy new attacks that they have. Like, all these flips or, like, really powerful punches and shit. And then you get to, uh, Tarumi. And it's just an overhead. It's just a basic overhead. But it's like, hey, it's Tarumi, right? This is what you fucking, this is what you guys fucking wanted. Now shut the hell up about Tarumi. Goddamn. But, uh, yeah, this, it's the same thing. I just got to Platinum. She has a move that Elfelt and Guilty Gear has. Like, literally, the same exact move. The same exact animation that Elfeld has, it's that little, I don't know if she like hops on a scooter, like a hoverboard or something, but she does something and it's kind of like, she jumps up on something and kind of scoots forward and it's a low attack, that's the exact same thing the Platinum just did, but yeah, Tager has some new kind of throw and the animation for it looks horrible, <laughs> Woo. I'm trying, I mean, because I have to be honest, you know, when I was watching this, Naoto actually does look like a character I will play. Like, I have to give that to them, even though I have no fucking clue who they are, even though I think there are other characters in the game that I think deserve priority placement in regard to being, you know, characters that people can play. At least uh, Naoto actually looks interesting to me. That definitely looks like a character that I would pick up. Hibiki, not so much, but it's, it's just... I mean, I don't. You can't really discuss the game that much right now, since obviously there is. We have a two second. I mean, not a two second. A two minute trailer, where like a minute of it is kind of like dialogue and not gameplay related and stuff like that. And so, um, I mean, I, I, you know, all you can really discuss at this point in regard to the game, besides just pure speculation, is the business side of things. And again, I just I disagree with every single bit of it. I cannot find anything in regard to the game that I, in regard to how they're treating the series and how rapidly they're just continually churning out um versions and it kills me because it doesn't allow the metagame to really kind of progress like for instance a lot of people kind of speculate that in calamity trigger talkaka was actually a competitor for a potential s tier spot but the game just wasn't allowed to develop long enough for the true potential of talkaka to be unlocked and when you look at characters like that i really feel like that's how it is like characters like Taker always seem initially strong because they're not difficult to play and they're easy to figure out and you know there's not like a lot of hidden depth to these characters so you immediately kind of see not necessarily their full potential but like 95 percent of their potential very rapidly same thing with a character like Azriel. same thing with a character like Nu same thing with a character like Hazama these are characters that are not terribly difficult to play not very difficult to understand their combo routes, their capabilities, neutral, all that stuff, versus a character like Talkaka or Carl, who, like, they have so many options and such kind of unique capabilities as a character that you really need to be a character specialist and put in a ton of time with them to actually understand, like, what they can do, 
what their answers are and they have a whole hell of a lot of answers that you know a lot of people just don't use because again you have to put a ton of time into them to understand the character and so you constantly have you know a character you have to ask, I mean, obviously Dogura is a godlike player. Asriel, there's no question, I'm not saying like, oh, if the game had been allowed to develop, Asriel would have been dropped down to like E tier. He was always going to be an incredibly strong character. But the question has to be asked, if you allowed the metagame to develop, would people have been able to figure out Asriel better? And would he not have been doing as well? Because he, Asriel is the type of character that right out the gate is initially incredibly strong. But, he also has some glaring weaknesses that you can manipulate into your favor. Most notably, his lack of kind of really effective neutral game. And so there are a lot of characters that I feel like could potentially counterpick Asriel. But nobody's really at the level yet where they can counterpick in Blaze Blue. Pretty much everybody that plays Blaze Blue is a character specialist. There's, no, there's nobody that's going around and actually like playing matchups... Or anything they just they pick their character and they play that character maybe they have a sub that they may pick otherwise somebody like skd who like wants to play Izioi, but they'll play ragna if they're playing a good uh if they're fighting a good person uh, opposite them that is effective with their character and then he was you know felt Izioi was too weak to handle obviously Izioi is not weak at all anymore and she can probably handle whatever the hell she needs to um but still the point stands there's very few people that play matchups and i feel like that you know if there were more people that had the capability of playing matchups versus only playing one character, Asriel would not be seen as as much of a threat as he is. Because again, while he is a threat, there are certain characters that he's not that much of a threat against. Um, and so it's things like that where like you just you don't allow the metagame to develop, and that's actually something that uh, Spooky had a conversation with Keats regarding, and basically Keats said. I would gladly have paid as much as Blaze Blue pay players are paying for their series to have many more years of MVC3 updates and content. Now here's the thing. I completely understand that point of view where you want your game to receive continued support, you want your game to flourish, to not die out, and obviously, you know, I'm not trying to say Marvel is dead, but it is certainly going downhill. It's reached its peak, it will never get there again, and interest will continue to dwindle the further along the competitive community gets, and that's just a fact of life. And so I can completely understand that aspect of wanting to see your game continue to flourish, wanting to see it improved, but that's the thing, right? That's the operative word, improved. How often do you think Blaze Blue, as a game, has actually been improved? over time that's the question for me personally it's a roller coaster sometimes it gets better sometimes it gets worse it gets worse cp 1.0 was a highlight for me right up until coco Noe got released and ruined the whole fucking thing but cp 1.0 was very very good you had characters that were obviously very strong characters like valkenheim and asriel you had characters that were very weak like bullet and amani but still aside from that the overall balance of the game was still effective enough that it could have had a very long life on its own right up until the point that kokonoi dlc was released and ruined everything and then 1.1 came along and kind of fixed it it made some changes i wasn't particularly happy about it made some changes that were okay but you know as while i don't think 1.1 was as good as pre kokonoi 1.0 it was still a pretty damn good game and then Extend came out. I don't even need to talk about that. We all know how I feel about Extend. And it was the same thing with Continuum Shift. I thought CS1... Does, I mean, CS1 was pretty unbalanced. Let's, let's be honest. CS1 was pretty unbalanced. CS2.0, same kind of thing. It still had the same balance issues. Extend was... Ugh. Again, just... Ugh. I didn't like it. So it's a roller coaster with me. But So that's the thing that you have to consider is like, yes, you want your game updated. You want your game improved. But, but, pull it back a bit, you're looking at this kind of thing, and you're, I'm probably assuming he's looking at, like, Street Fighter, right? Like, the Street Fighter update thing, I have no issues with that whatsoever. I have no complaints about how they handled it. Aside from Ono oh basically coming out and saying, I purposefully made AE Edition an unbalanced mess, and I made the twins overpowered on purpose, and blah, blah, blah. Aside from that whole thing... I am very much on board with everything Street Fighter did. Versus, you know, 
if you're looking at it, it, it I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. If you're looking at your game and you're thinking, all right, I want to. I wish this game had been updated and uh, supported for as long as Blaze Blue is. However, would you have the same mentality if you didn't actually agree with the changes? If the changes weren't necessarily made for the betterment of the game, but just kind of seemingly made on a whim, uh, just to kind of randomly try things out for shits and giggles, versus you know actually working on making the game better overall. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, obviously, again, yes, I understand the concept of, like, you want to see your game continually worked on and given attention and supported, and that means the community continues to interact and support it all together, and it thrives and survives, and blah, blah, blah. I understand that mentality perfectly. But I think the people would have rioted if they treated Marvel the same way that Blaze Blue is being treated. Because Capcom is has a far, you know, Capcom is basically the target. When people consider DLC shenanigans, they put a fucking bullseye right on Capcom. Even though, again, Arc System Works is actually worse about it than Capcom is. Capcom was bad about it, but they were nowhere near as bad as Arc System Works, but Capcom is just a much higher profile. They're on a lot more people's radar, and especially on a lot more people's radar that are looking, that are actively searching for things to uh, hate on in regard to gaming versus a company like Arc System Works, which basically, if you're not a fan of Arc System Works, you don't give a shit about what's going on. You don't care about their DLC. You don't care about what they're releasing, when they're releasing it. You just, it's, who the fuck is Arc System Works? Versus, again, Capcom is a worldwide name. It's an example for, you know, people that are saying, oh, the golden age of gaming is gone because look at companies like Capcom doing what they're doing. People like that are aiming for Capcom and looking for things to bitch about versus nobody's really looking at Arc System Works and saying, all right, what are they going to do next that I can bitch about? And so I, I really do think, you know, again, 100% agree with the fact that you want your game supported. And that's a good thing to hope for, that your game gets support. However, the kind of support is entirely relevant to the point here. And I think he's completely missing that. And anybody that would say the same thing is completely missing that where he's kind of basically just saying you should appreciate you have what you have because some other people don't have the same thing and that's bullshit like that is just complete nonsense like he's basically saying you know like you should appreciate your moldy disgusting sickening bread because some people don't have any bread to begin with you should appreciate it because some pe some people have it worse and that is a complete bullshit cop-out mentality to want to expect excellence from the things that you love. You want what you love to be worthy of that love. And for me personally, Blaze Blue has done nothing to be worthy of, you know, my affection for the series overall. You know, it's I feel like I made a huge mistake. I don't know if I ever mentioned this. But I imported CP, and when CP came out in America, I bought the English version solely to support it and support the company because I thought the game was good and I thought it was worth doing. And then Arc System works, and then I actually kind of, you know, suddenly realized, like, wow, they are not worthy of that level of loyalty from me. And I, I legitimately regret doing that. And it has nothing to do with the money and everything to do with, like, kind of the feelings behind it and how mistaken they were. And that's kind of where I'm going with this is, like, a lot. that's kind of what a lot of people are saying is, like, you guys should feel lucky that they're even bothering to release this game outside of arcades in the first place. And it's like, you know what, man? That's cool. That's great. But if it's not something that's worth playing, what am I lucky over? Why should I be glad that they're shoveling shit at me just because I happen to like a product they previously had? There's nothing to like about that. I'm not going to endure that for the sake of, you know, past loyalties, past affections. I'm going to walk away. And that's what kind of blows my mind about people who try to use that as a defense. And it even, that's actually one of the things that, because I didn't do, obviously I didn't do a Nate Talks this week because there wasn't anything specifically to talk about until central faction was a uh, fiction my bad not faction till central fiction was released is that this actually ties in so i may as well just talk about it and get rid of it because there's not a lot that i want to say about it but uh there have been numerous stories lately of representatives from square enix basically saying 
If you want to see more Dragon Quest outside of Japan, please purchase the Dragon Quest Heroes game. And they're not coming out and saying that specifically, like, oh, Dragon Quest Heroes doesn't do well, we're not going to localize any more Dragon Quest. They're not coming out and saying that, but they're saying things like, I mean, hey, it would be a really nice indication of interest if you guys would purchase Dragon Quest Heroes and it would show that, you know, you guys want more Dragon Quest. And now here's the thing. For those of you that may not be fans of Dragon Quest, Dragon Quest Heroes is a live-action beat-em-up. Not a live-action, but, like, an action-adventure beat-em-up, you know, kind of... Like, ta like a Tales of game. Where it's not turn-based, it's not an RPG, it's not... It has nothing to do with Dragon Quest aside from the characters and the art style. There's nothing else that associates it with Dragon Quest. They're basically saying, hey, buy this game that we call Dragon Quest that is not an actual Dragon Quest if you want more Dragon Quest. Even though the genres are not even moderately similar, even though they have nothing to do with each other, if you want to see more Dragon Quest localized, you better get this game! And it's the same exact thing where it's like, people are so scared of sales being so bad that people, that Arc System Works will just say, hey, you know what, it's not worth releasing outside of Japan anymore, so fuck it, we'll just, we'll not, we'll stop localizing it. And the shitty thing is, is that they're right. They are right to expect that, because this happened with Fire Emblem. It's happened with numerous Japanese games, but most notably for me, Fire Emblem. I'm a Fire Emblem fan. You saw, and you may have seen that recent Nate Talks, where uh, it was basically about Fire Emblem, when Oscar died like a bitch. But so, I own, except for Shadow Dragon, I own every single American-released Fire Emblem. I have played every single American-released Fire Emblem numerous times. I just recently played back through uh, Path of Radiance, Radiant Dawn, Fire Emblem 7, and I'm in the middle of playing Fire Emblem 8. I'm playing them all over again because I like them that much. That's how much of a fan of Fire Emblem I am. And yet Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon was one of the worst, not worst, one of the most mediocre, average, completely irrelevant experiences I have ever played in my life. I didn't purchase it, I game it because I completely forgot it came out because it received absolutely no marketing and I just saw it on Gamefly on my suggestion games I was like, oh, why the fuck not, may as well. And uh, I played it, I hated it, I shipped it back, and I never heard from it again. And that's how the game was received. It was not received well. It did not sell well. And instead of Nintendo saying, oh shit, you know, that game was clearly, clearly had its flaws, might not have been worth buying, we'll make sure our next product that we release to you is up to snuff, is of a higher quality, and is deserving of your money. No, they said, oh shit, America isn't interested in a Fire Emblem anymore, I guess they don't receive it. And that's complete bullshit, but that's how it worked out. And it's... So people have a very legitimate concern when it comes to the fact that if these games don't sell, maybe they'll stop coming here completely. So even though I may not like it, even though I may not agree with it, I still feel compelled to purchase it because surely it'll get better in the future. You're in an abusive relationship right now. She only hits me because she loves me. Surely she'll stop once I start giving her what she wants. You're in an abusive relationship. Get out of it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a little serious right there. That's obviously a little bit further than the comparison needed to go. But still, it's just... And again, I'm not trying to you know say, hey, you really need to stop supporting Arc System Works. Support what you support. Put your money where you believe your money deserves to go. It's your money. It's not mine. I'm not your fucking banker. I'm not your... Uh, accountant you know trying to direct your money to the best possible ventures it's your shit do what you want to do with it uh but it's still just it's that kind of thing where i kind of wish you wouldn't <laughs> because maybe again there's two outcomes to that to that happening to people stopping just completely cold turkey walking away from our system works a, they could take that as a sign. It's like, oh shit, we fucked up. We can't, you know, we can't keep screwing with our fan base like this. We gotta, you know, we gotta share the love a little bit. We gotta show them that we appreciate them. Or again, you could get the second outcome where they're like, oh, guess they're just not interested in our games anymore. We may as well not give them to them uh, ever again. And that's honestly, given Arc System Works track record, that would be the one that I would think they would do. So, it's... I mean, I don't really have anything good to say about 
a new version of Blaze Blue because I am completely soured with Arc System Works in its entirety. I just cannot agree with I have not agreed with anything they've done in the past like year. And that's mind blowing that they've done so much shit. And every single time I'm just staring and looking and like, did they really do that? Really? After all this? Like they're just continuing to dig the hole? How deep do they want this bitch? They're gonna burn themselves eventually. The core's gonna get them. It's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. All that I can do is cross my fingers and hope that something occurs to make them worthwhile again. Because right now I have not seen anything good and that makes me think you know like damn man i really need to get back into paying attention to them because good things are in the future i mm. so anyway hopefully you feel differently and you're more overjoyed at a new blaze blue than i am but it's still just people have barely even gotten their hands on extend outside of japan and they're already saying ah fuck extend it's irrelevant which i mean honestly should be kind of a good thing to me you know like in regard to my feelings about extend it should be good to me that they're like and this isn't really something worth paying attention to, so pay attention to this instead, because, you know, it proves me right, right? Like, this was not a game worth considering, but it's still just... If they had put the time in, if they had not been so focused on the next version of Blaze Blue and had actually done an effective job, and, you know, but that's basically what I'm thinking right now, is, like, they're spreading themselves so thin for all these different games, for all these different updates... For all these different ports, what have you, what not. What would a game look like? How good would a game be if they just sat down and took like a year's break. And then came back fresh and said, alright. Let's make a fighting game to blow all the other fighting games out of the water. Rather than just, ah, hey, let's just keep churning out updates. Why the fuck not? It's working so far. And, you know, it's that... It's that optimistic side where, you know, you want you see the promise in a series and you think, you know, this could be great, but the developers don't want to spend the time to see it to that potential. So what are you going to do? You know, you're going to sit behind a microphone and bitch because there's nothing else you can do about it because they sure as fuck don't care about me. So uh, I'll end it right there. It's gone on long enough. Thank you for listening. Hope everything is well with you guys, because goddamn, am I not happy about all this? Uh, yeah. I'll catch y'all later.